نعم أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته عليكم السلام ورحمة الله وبركاته نعم إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له ثم أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلوات الله وسلامه عليه وعلى آله وأتباعه إلى يوم الدين أما بعد يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما Respected brothers and sisters we begin by praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we praise him we ask his forgiveness we also send our blessing and salutation to our beloved Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and his household. I take this opportunity to uh, have a gratitude and thank the uh, those who prepared or organized this uh, topic today, uh, which is a very important topic in Islam about Sulat al-Rahim, the kinship, uh, kinship ties, the ties of our our families the bonds that binding us uh, within our families. Uh, this Surah Al-Rahim, we will go through this topic because it's a, quite a concept uh, in Islam. And what's, what's about this concept? What is it in Islam? Why the emphasis on this particular concept? Surah Al-Rahim will go also in the Quran how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you'll be amazed to see how Allah emphasizes, uh, strongly emphasize about this, uh, on this topic. And also Surah Al-Rahma in various hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And finally, we will also uh, dive into the severe warning that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala warns those who break the uh, ties of, kin of kinship. Uh, as a quick introduction to this topic, let me start by saying that uh, why this topic? Why the topic of family? Uh, we are not talking about family in the sense of uh, how to raise the kids, our ch the children. We're not talking about fam family, about family, about how to leave a husband and a wife and leave. But it is beyond that. It is beyond that. Uh, many of us, we are used to listen to topics of uh, ibadat or aqida, uh, act of worship or doctrine in Islam. Uh, and we all know that Islam is actually the, uh, divided into three main areas, we can, we can say. Uh, is al-aqida, which is the doctrine, the imaniyat, all the, 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 the belief. And also al-ibadat. Al-ibadat is the act of worship, such as salah such as zakat, sadaqa, hajj, umrah, sawm, all these are part of uh, ibadat. But there is another area which is called or referred to as al-mu'amalat, which is the relationship. And also there are some other scholars, they add what we call al-akhlaq, but some also akhlaq is part of a relation, a relationship. So it's whether it's a relationship between you and your Lord, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, your creator, or whether it's a relationship between you uh, and your, within your family, within your extended family. But Islam goes as far as to legislate even our relationship with our, our neighbors, subhanAllah. Even be them Muslim or non-Muslim. Islam legislates as well our relationship with the, our friends and family or friends and colleagues, even at work, be them Muslims or non-Muslims. So you may do well as a Muslim in the area of uh, aqidah, in the area of uh, act of worship, in the area of doctrine in Islam, but you fail or you neglect the area of al-mu'amalat, your relationship. 
or vice versa. You may do well in your relationship, you may do well in your ibadat, but if your aqidah is wrong, you'll be, you'll be a failure. So therefore, you can see that Islam legislates our life holistically in all aspects of human, human life. So in this introduction, what I'm, I can conclude is that that's, before I dive into the, uh, the, the topic, we can say that even some of the scholars say, they, 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 they usually say that uh, there is no deen or religion from other religion or even min al madahib or a madhab or a sect or nidama min al anzima or even a, a system amongst other systems alladhi da'a ila sulat al-rahim wa ila tawahud wa tarabut wa tawasul kama da'a al-islam there is no re religion no any other system in the in, in the world that's really recommend uh, about sulat al-rahim about family ties or ties of kinship that as islam recommends and emphasize so brothers and sisters, I'm inviting you. Let's, let, let me give you an example of uh, a place where I, I visited recently in, in Africa. I witnessed in a region where mosques are full with worshippers, even Salat al-Fajr. You know, I'm, I'm talking of mosque like uh, of two, over 200 people. And especially in Ramadan, you see people, you know, uh, praying outside on the road and especially in, in Juma, subhanAllah. And I said to myself, hey, mashallah, tabarakallah. But on the other hand, so I said, well, mashallah, they are doing well in their ibadat. But on the other hand, when I look at the same people, looking at the patterns of day-to-day -day life in area of sociology, in area of the same people, like uh, social behavior or social relationship, or the family structure, functioning of social interaction, you will not you notice that families are broken down. Ties of families are broken. You see a brother doesn't talk to another si the sister, the sister doesn't talk to the siblings, wife not, don't, don't talk to in-laws, things like that. But when you look at in the mosque, in the masjid, the masjid is full, jump packed by the same people. Then when I saw those family breakdown and I say to myself, inna lillahi wa inna ilahi rajiun, meaning that these Muslims are very successful in ibadat, in the act of worship, but there is a chaos in area of al-mu'amalat. So this is true not only in that particular region, this is true in many regions, in many communities. If you do yourself a, a study in your own home country or in your com community, you will realize that people make uh, doing more emphasis on ibadat and less emphasis on uh, al-mu'amalat or relationship. Whereas Islam is both aqidah, uh, ibadah, and also mu'amalat, okay? So that's when you look at Islam. So you look in the Quran, how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala emphasize about mu'amalat, how the various hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam calling to unity within the family, within the community, and within the ummah. So this shows that there's a, in, the importance of this particular uh, topic or concept of uh, sulat al-rahim, uh, which is the link or kinship ties within our, our family. We can also add that even the ibadat we are doing, the salah, the zakah, the hajj, all these ibadat, they are men, they are actually connected to al-mu'amalat, a relationship. If you look deeply, the ibadah we are doing, they are meant to touch our heart, to soften our heart and affect our attitude and behavior in our relationships with, our, with others. That's the, 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 the wisdom behind the ibadat. If the ibadah you are doing doesn't touch your heart, doesn't change your heart, doesn't change your attitude toward other people, then there's something wrong with your ibadah. I can give you a quick example, in, such as in salah, for instance, how salah can polish our relationship with others. Allah says in the Quran, you know, Omi telling the Prophet وسلم, recite what has been revealed to you from the book. Then waqim is salat. Then establish prayer. Indeed, in salata tanha anil fahshai wal munkar. Prayer indeed prohibits, you know, what restrains people 
from immorality, indecency, and shameful acts. That is the prayer. So meaning that if the prayer can restrain you from immorality toward others, prayer can restrain you from indecency or shameful act toward others or wrongdoing toward others. That is the meaning of, that, that's the true salah. So salah prohibits immorality against in your relationship with others. Salah prohibits shameful acts in your behavior with others. So you can see how the act of ibadah affects or is in connection with al-mu'amalat. Sadaqah, the same thing. Uh, in one of the hadith, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, Sadaqatu tutfi'u ghadab al-rabb. Sadaqa that the charity we do extinguishes the anger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The anger of Allah comes when he sees you, you have, and you don't give others. You don't give to, to, uh, to, to his servants. Then you have the anger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So you can see that sadaqa also connects with your mu'amalat or your relationship with others. Even psalm is an ibadah. But again, you will be amazed to read in the instruction from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam how uh, about fasting affecting our behavior and hence our relationship with others, our mu'amalat. Where the Prophet said, As-sawmu junna, fa'idha kana yawm sawmu ahadikum, when it is the day of your, so one of you is fasting, fala yarfuf, should not engage into bad language, obscene language, wala yakhsab. Even if in sabahu ahadun aw qatalahu, even someone want to dispute with you while you are fasting, what do you have to do? Faliyakul inni sa'im. So you have to say that I am fasting, I am fasting. So you can see how fast restrain you, refrain you from harming other people. So you can see the relationship between ibadah and al muamalat and muamalat. And others, uh, uh, there's so, so many uh, examples we, we, we can give. So you can see clearly that our deen, Islam, is all about aqidah, ibadah, and al-mu'amalat, the relationship, the relationship. So our topics today is not about uh, ibadat, no. It is about mu'amalat. But it's not mu'amalat in general, but it is mu'amalat between you and your kinship and your family and your relative, being your closest relatives or extended family. And that's what we call al sulatu rahim sulatu rahim So, <clears throat> when we talk sulatu rahim we, are mean, we mean sulatu insan bi ghayrihi. It's the relationship, the connection between you and others. Others here is your family, is your kinship, okay? in general, but it's specifically relationship of a person with his own large families or uh, ties, or how you can bond, binding people together. I can go with the definition. Let's start with the definition, how we define Sulat al-Rahim in Islam before we can go dive into the Quran and into the Sunnah with regard to this topic. By definition, the Arabic language, the word family means um, they use the words aila or al us or usra. These or ahl, all these are the different words that are used in Arabic language to depict the word family. But Allah in the Quran, instead of using the word family, aila, he used the word rahim. Rahim to represent or to depict family. And hence the topic is sulatul rahim. Silatul Rahim, family ties or kinship ties. So by definition, linguistically, Sula, it means Wasala. It comes from the verb Wasala, Yasil, or Isal, or Sula. Wasala means uh, to connect, Rabata, uh, or Dham, to link together, to fill up the joint. That's uh, Wasala. Okay, binding things together. That's the word, the verb Wasala. Okay, so here is wasala what? Binding what is rahim. And rahim in Arabic is the, the womb, the womb of the mother. That's the meaning of uh, rahim. But here rahim, the womb means the family, means the kinship, because every member of the family of the family 
comes from a womb, whether it's you, the parents, the children, the siblings, the aunt, the cousin, all of us, the whole generation, all come from the same womb. Okay, so rahim in Arabic is womb. So when we say silatul rahim is ties, joining the ties together of the womb, or ties of the womb, ties of family, ties of kinship. That's in the, in linguistically. But when it comes to the Sharia in Islam, the istilah, uh, the scholars in Sharia, what they, they define as Sulatul Rahim is what? Huwa al-ihsan, or hiya al-ihsan, ila al-aqarib, wa isal ma amkana min al-khayr, man amkana bihi min al-khayrat ila ilayhi, or min al-khayr ilayhi. Is providing, doing good toward your family, toward your relatives. Uh, providing them with something good, okay? The others, they go even further. Even protected, protecting them from any harm. So that's the definition that is given by the scholar. So, so the doing good toward your relative, your closest member of the family, uh, providing them what is possible and also uh, protecting them from harming, harming them. That, so that's the definition you give to Sulatul Rahim, okay? Again, when you say it's providing or uh, doing good, the opposite of this is what we call Qati'atul Rahim, is breaking that ties. Sula, when you join, when you connect to the ties of the family, but Qati'a, when you break these joints or these binding uh, ties of the family. So there's two things here. The one that's joining or connecting within the family, whether it's your related family or even extended family, you're talking about Rahim, okay? Or someone who breaks the ties of a family. So by definition, this is what we, 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 we said, we, we talk about Silatul Rahim, okay? Silatul Rahim in Islam. Uh, but more than that, we can go on and on in the Quran when we browse the Quran and find how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talking about this particular uh, concept in, this, in, in the Quran. So we said Surah Rahim is that binding the ties of family, binding the ties between, uh, between uh, members of our family. So what Allah says in the Quran is about this. So there are so many verses in the Quran about the importance of maintaining the kinship ties. You'd be amazed. It's not only one or two verses, but a number of verses. Some of them, Allah keep repeating them. And when Allah repeat, repeat a concept, it, it depicts what the importance of that concept. Let me start with this famous uh, verse in Surah Al-Nisa, which is uh, part of the verse I, re I recited in my introduction. We call part of this uh, Khutbah Al-Hajjah. The Prophet وسلم, used to recite these uh, three verses of Khutbah al Haja. One of them is in Surah Al Nisa when Allah says, Ya ayu an nasu taqu rabbakum al ladhi khalaqakum min nafsin wahida, wa khalaqa minha zawjaha, wa batta minhuma rijalan kathira wa nisa, wa taqu Allah al ladhi tasa'aluna bihi wal arham, inna Allah kana alaykum raqiba. What Allah says here, Ya ayu an nasu, O mankind, be conscious, fear Allah, fear your Lord, be conscious of your Lord who created you out of one soul. And from this soul, he created its soul mate. And out of this two, he spread multitude of men and women. Okay? And then he said, And be conscious of your Lord in whose name you ask things from one another. Wal arham and have taqwa and be conscious of what? Of kinship ties. And Allah indeed is uh, ever watching over you. What is the key word here to take to, 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 to observe? Is that Allah says, Be conscious first of Allah who created us from one soul. That's number one. And then what? Another consciousness of Allah is that be conscious of Allah in whose name you ask one another 
and be conscious of, of what? Well, Arham, be conscious of Al Arham, which is the relatives, the family or kinship ties. So in this verse, we learn that we are recommended to have taqwa of Allah and to have taqwa of Al Arham, which is Ram Jamma or plural of Rahim, taqwa of Rahim of kinship. So you can see how Allah linked having taqwa of Allah and having taqwa of kinship, subhanAllah. So the question is, what does it mean having taqwa? We all know having taqwa of Allah. Be conscious of Allah, be dutiful to Allah, uh, be uh, fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by observing the commands, you know, and stay away from prohibition. That's number one. But what's the meaning of having taqwa of kinship? And why Allah joined these two together? First, the, the right of Allah, then the right of kinship. It's, it's a very important uh, uh, question. Some of the scholars, or many of the scholars, they actually give explanation to this verse, said having taqwa of Allah and having taqwa of kinship. What they said can be understood in two ways. First is having taqwa of Allah in whose name one another, you ask one another, you ask a thing one another. And we all know that sometimes when you want to ask your brother, I said, I ask you, my brother, to help me by Allah, by Allah's name. So we ask one another, he said, can you assist me by Allah's name? All right? Or can you forgive me by Allah? You see, we also do, we do that. That's the one. And have taqwa also in the name of family, in the name of kinship, you ask one another. So first we ask one another in, by Allah's name. And we also we ask one another by the name of the family. So you can say, for instance, my brother, forgive me for the sake of family. I will give you this for the sake of family. So we, it is a language that we always use in our social interaction within families. So that's the first explanation when they say having taqwa of Allah and having taqwa of uh, kinship. So the second explanation, according to the scholars in Tafsir of the same verse, they said having taqwa of Allah, it means being cautious of the right of Allah, be dutiful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and also be conscious of the right of your family. So you can see how this implies that the kinship ties have high privilege, which is second to Allah's privilege. Allah is right. So in this particular verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala depicts and shows us that the right of Allah first then the right of a kinship of the families, okay? Being conscious of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and also being conscious of our uh, family ties or, or family. You can clarify this more with the more other, other verses when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says again in the same surah, surah al nisa in verse number 36, Allah says, Wa wa la tushriku bihi shay'a. He said, worship Allah alone. Allah is commanding us, let worship Allah alone and do not associate anything with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The first command. Second command, وَبِالْوَالِدَيْنِ إِحْسَانًا And do good towards your parents. وَبِذِلْقُرْبَى And your closest family members, relative. وَلِيَتَامَى And be good to, do good towards the orphans. masakin. And the poor or the needy, well, jari dil qurba, and your close neighbor, well, jari dil well, jari junub, junub, and the the, uh, the neighbors, which is a far neighbor. So when you read this verse, what to to extract in here is that first, the right of Allah, worshiping Allah alone and without associating Allah with anything, no shirk. Then what comes second is the right of uh, the uh, the right of parents. So you can clearly see in this verse how Allah puts the right of worshipping him alone first uh, and then after the right of the parents to doing good toward the parents and then the right of family members. Of course, parents are part of the family members. But here Allah says the right of uh, the parent, then the right of family members. Again, this is to show how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala emphasized his right and second to that one becomes the right of your family. In the Quran, we find verses talking about the right of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Sometimes it said the right of Allah and the right of parent. 
and sometimes it recommends the right of Allah and then the right of kinship or family, you know, in, in, in different verses. You can clarify again in Surah Al-Baqarah, uh, verse number 30, uh, 83, Allah, when Allah says, Remember when, we, when Allah took the covenant with the children of Israel. What is that covenant? He wrote, La ta'abuduna illa Allah. Do not worship none except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wa bil walidayni ihsana. They should be good to their parents. Wa dil qurba and their kinship or family or relatives. And then it comes the orphans, the poor, them. So you can see how essentially the same command being repeated, repeated in these two, in these two surah showing the right of relatives before the right, even the orphans, before the right of poor. This is to say that before you assist a poor, assist first someone within your, 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 your that poor or person within your family first. So furthermore, in so many verses we can read when Allah says like in Surah Al-Baqarah again, in the same Surah Al-Baqarah chapter uh, 2 verse 177, say, Laysal birra an wal when Allah says, hey, if you want to know pure, pure, uh, true piety, it does not consist in you turning the, your face toward the east and the, and, and the west. But true uh, piety lies in believing in Allah and the last day, the angels and the revelation and the prophets. And then starting now, that's a belief. And then now he's starting now with a relation. He said, uh, And giving, spending your, your wealth, uh, though you love it, but spending toward who? To who? The will qurba, toward the relative, your kinship. And then the orphans. And then the needy. The travelers. And all others. So you can again see the rights of relatives come before the right of orphans, before the right of poor, before the right of needy, before the right of travelers. Again, this is being repeated in the Quran, in so many, many verses in the Quran. We can go on and on with the verses of the Quran, how Allah put the right of Allah first, and then what comes after the rights of parents or the rights of family. So this, is, this means that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala insists in this. Someone can say, hey, yes, but it is, is it uh, istihbab, someone, something that Allah is uh, telling us, but it's not, it's not a command? Yes, it is a command, because sometimes he use the verb uh, with imperative command, or sometimes he use even the word amr. In one of the verses in Surah Al-Nahl, Allah says, inna Allah ya'amru bil adli ya'amru. Indeed, Allah commands or enjoin Subhanallah. Allah enjoin what? Bil adli, justice. Wal ihsan, and doing good. Wa ita'i dhil qurba. So three things that are recommended, recommended by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Justice, and then generosity, in general, but generosity toward ita'i dhil qurba, toward one's relative or one's kinship. And then uh, the verse continue with the yanha anil fahshai wal munkar, forbidding what is shameful and others. So you can see clearly how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala repeatedly, repeatedly in the Quran about uh, insisting this concept of uh, kinship ties in the Quran. So well, one can say, okay, this is the Quran and then there are so many verses in Surah Al-Ahzab, we can read them in Surah Al-Rum. There's so many verses which we, uh, we can just take a summary. When it comes to hadith or sunnah, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the concept of Sulat Rahim or kinship ties, there are so many hadith by the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. You can see how the Prophet Subhanallah, Subhanallah is uh, telling us, instructing us, reminding us about, about the virtue of or the importance of keeping or maintaining the kinship ties. In one of the hadith on Aisha radiallahu anha from the wife of the Prophet, uh, may Allah be pleased with her, he said, قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم. Said the messenger of Allah said, الرحم معلقة بالعرش. Again, remember the word rahim, which is the womb. He said, the womb معلقة بالعرش is suspended with the arsh. 
is together connected with the, with the, with the arsh, with the throne of Allah. We all know the throne of Allah. We can even not describe it. How big is the throne? Subhanallah. So the rahim, the womb, to mean the family ties or kinship, is linked with arsh, the throne of Allah. Taqul, it says the rahim, the sila, that uh, ties, family kinship, it sells. Again, this is min uh, min so from something invisible, we don't see it, but we believe in it, invisible. The womb will say, Man wasalani wasalahu Allah. Anyone who will maintain with me, will connect with me, Allah will connect with him. Waman qata'ani qata'ahu Allah. And one who disconnect with me, Allah, Allah will disconnect with him. What does it mean? It's so, it's a big warning here. Said the womb the family ties will say say that anyone who will connect with me, if you may keep and maintaining your ties, the family ties within your family, Allah will connect with you. If you disconnect, Allah will disconnect with you. It means you may do well in your ibadat, good salah, good hajj, good umrah, right? But you fail in your relationship, in your ties, in your kinship relationship. So you, when you do that, you're actually disconnected with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So what will happen to someone who is disconnected to Allah, to, with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? So what will be the, the importance of your amal, of your deed, once you are disconnected with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Again, this hadith is uh, in Bukhari and Muslim, but it is also... Um, uh, explain more with another hadith on Anas radiallahu anhu. He said, he relates to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, the Prophet said, inna rahim shujnatun mutamassika bil arsh. He said, rahim, the womb, it's, uh, it's something which is, it's, it's connected with the arsh, with the throne of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's part of the throne of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, connected with the throne. He said, "Takallama bilisan in dhulq." It will say will, with the with the tongue which is unpetted tongue. Subhanallah. He said, "Allahumma." The womb will say, "Allahumma." That making du'a. Allahumma sil man wa salani. Oh Allah, connect with the one who will connect with me. Waqta man qata'ani, and disconnect with the one who will disconnect with me. That's the womb making dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Obviously, Allah will respond with that dua. Allah fayaqul, tabarakallah wa ta'ala, Allah will, will reply, he said, Ana rahman rahim In other verse, in other narration, Ana rahman I am the merciful, the most merciful, the compassionate. Wa inni shaqaqtu lirrahim min ismi. And I derived my name from Rahim, from the word Rahim. So the name Ar Rahman derived from the word Rahim, Um. So Allah said, Inni shaqaqtu, I derived the Rahman, minismi. I derived this Rahim, the Um, from my name, which is my name, which name, which is Ar Rahman. So he derived the, more, the word Rahim from Ar Rahman. The word womb, the word kinship, the word family came or derived from the word Allah. Then Allah says, Faman wasalaha, the one who will connect, will maintain the ties of the womb, wasaltuhu. I will connect with him. I will maintain ties with him. Waman nakatha, waman nakatha, nakathu, nakathu. Uh, and uh, the one who will disconnect and I will disconnect with him. SubhanAllah, these are really, when you reflect upon this hadith, it's really very, very strong. So it means this is the importance of the mu'amalat, our relationship, especially here within our own family. When you keep and maintaining the ties, Allah will maintain, connect with you. Allah will keep maintaining with you. When you disconnect for any other re any reason, Allah will totally disconnect with you. And it's not only that hadith. This is the hadith to see how the womb, Rahim, is connected with the throne of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala.
and the dua made by the um, the womb uh, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the response to the Allah, of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In one of the verse the, in a hadith, there was a, a person on Ayyub al-Ansari, a hadith narrated by Abu, Abu Ayyub al-Ansari, he said, Anna rajulan qala sallallahu sallam. A man came to the Prophet and asked, tell the, told the Prophet, Akhbirni bi amalin yudkhil al-jannah. So tell me the uh, a deed that I can do that will allow me, permit me to enter paradise. Because the Sahaba, this is their, 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 their attitude. Always they will concentrate on things that will allow them, will admit them into Jannah. We nowadays, we concentrate on these two, on, on the risk, on the other things. But then they were more concentrated, more keen on deeds that will admit them to Jannah. Then he answered the Prophet, Oh, Messenger of Allah, uh, tell me a deed that I can do. If I do it, I'll be admitted to paradise. Then the Prophet replied by saying, Okay, three things here. Ta'budullah, worship Allah. Do not associate Allah with anything whatsoever. Do not associate Allah with anything. Establish prayer. And give zakah, watasilu rahim, and also maintain the ties of kinship, the ties of family. In this hadith, what do we learn here? We try to how? Ta'abudullah wa la tushriku bihi shay'an. This is aqeedah. Part of this is our iman and tawheed is to worship Allah alone. Do not as add anything else in. Uh, with, with Allah, don't associate anything other than Allah. That's aqeedah. Then, وَتُقِيمُ الصَّلَاةِ وَتُؤْتِ الزَّكَاةِ This is ibadah. Establish prayer and also give charity, give zakah. This is to do with the ibadah. So starting with the aqeedah, the doctrine, the belief, then the ibadah, the act of worship, and then the other one, وَصِلُ وَتَصِلُ rahim Your mu'amalat your relationship with your family. So maintain your relationship with the family. The binding that binds you between you and your parents, you and your brother, you and your sisters, you and your cousin, you, all these, you need to do that. So you can see in this hadith, those three aspects of Islam that I said earlier, that Islam is divided into doctrine, aqidah, and ibadat, which is the, uh, the act of worship, and also mu'amalat, which is relationship. Here is a relationship within your family, within your extended family. In another hadith, an Abi Dhar, radiallahu anhu, annahu qal, and then he said, Abu Dhar, he said, awsani khalil, my friend, uh, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, some of them, they used, they used to say, my khalil, is my close friend. He said, he advised me, what? An la ta'khudhu fi Allahi lawmatan la'i. Do not always pay for loan. Every time you complain and complain, you know, you complain. And then the other one, which is the what we, what we emphasize here, Mahalu Shahid, awsani rahim. And then he also advised me to do what? To maintain the silat rahim, to maintain the ties of family. So this is what was advised by the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But again, in another hadith, I can conclude with this hadith, on Anas ibn Malik, uh, which is narrated by uh, Anas ibn Malik, he said, قَالَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ He said, مَنْ سَرَّهُ أَنْ يَبْسُطَ لَهُ فِي رِزْقِهِ Anyone who wants his risk, his wealth, to be given more and more wealth, eh? Subhanallah, if you want to do that, if you want more risk, Subhanallah, in the hadith, the Prophet said, Maintain the ties of kinship. If you want your wealth to be expanded, do what? Maintain the ties of kinship. Subhanallah. So again, there are more hadiths. You can go on and on with so many hadiths from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam with regard to the benefit of uh, uh, connecting or maintaining the ties of family, uh, the ties of, of, of family. But the most important part of uh, this topic 
is severe warning to those breaking the kinship ties. But again, before that, what I can say, uh, someone can say, okay, what's the, what's the type of uh, different, how can I maintain the, uh, the, the ties of family? Okay, there's a different ways. But the scholars, they divided into three categories of people. There is what we call wasl and qatia. Either you are a wasl, the one who do good towards his parents or towards his relative. So you are a wasl, the one who maintain or the maintainer of kinship ties. The opposite is qatia. Qati is the one who breaks the ties, family. But there is another, another third category is la wasl wa la qati. Someone, he's not someone who maintains, he's not a maintainer, he's not even the breaker. He doesn't maintain the family ties, he doesn't even break them. So what they say here, huwa alladhi la yuhsinu ila aqaribihi illa idha ahsanu ilayhi. Some people, they don't do good towards uh, relatives, unless until the relative member does do a good deed, good for, for, for him or for her. So you don't do any good until they do good fit to you. So that's uh, someone who is la also wa la qabla. So you only do good when they do uh, when they do this. And some someone like this la yasilu ila darajatin in isa'a. Sometimes he doesn't harm them, but he just like that. Uh, they, he does good deed when they do good deed to him. Okay, so that is the third category. But the most important part is uh, the severe warning in the Quran and also in the Hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. When you said doing good to 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 toward your relatives is either you provide them with things you can do good. You don't have even something to do to give them, but at least making making a call. Nowadays, it's very easy. You don't spend a day without calling a friend or a brother or a sibling. You don't spend a week without even texting. If you are busy calling, at least a texting. Show them even, you know, uh, smiling. So that is the least that you can do. The text, the message texting, that's the least that you can do. To your parents, to your sibling, to your cousin. We are talking about Sulat al-Rahim here. It's not only within your small closest member, your parents, your brother, your sister, and that's all. No, Sulat Rahim again, remember, is the womb. The womb is extended family, my cousin, my brother, my sisters, my aunt, my uncles, paternal, maternal, all of these, the great, great parents, all of them, this is Sulat Rahim. Rahim is actually extended family. Of course, there is a degree, you know, within that tree, family tree, there are degree. Of course, your parent comes first, and then your brother, your sister, second, and also the rights of others, they come uh, third and fourth, uh, and fourth. So you can have your second cousin, your third cousin, things like that. But all of them, they are actually uh, uh, within the same thing called Silat al Rahim. Okay? So let's quickly uh, conclude with the severe warning from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran. Allah in Surah Muhammad, He said, chapter 22, 23, He said, in and fil arab. How do you think when you actually committing fasad, corruption on the land? Okay? Arhamakum, and then you break the ties of kinship, you break the ties of family. Allah says, if you do that, making corruption on the earth and also breaking the ties of family Allah is saying these are the people those are the people Allah curse them subhanallah this is the curse of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cursing the level of cursing is more is more severe even punishment so the two things Allah can make uh, adab punishment people will go into the into the hellfire and some people out of this they, will, they can come out from the earth uh, of the earth and be admitted into paradise so it can be punished and then take away from uh, from the from, from the, the hellfire but when you are the level of a curse la'anatullah this is more severe subhanallah 
it's more severe. So we need to distinguish about adab, punishment, and also la'na, or cursing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the cursing of Allah here, Allah says in the Quran, is to word those who commit corruption in the earth, and also rahim, those who break the ties of their family. They don't assist them, they don't call them, they don't help them, nothing, no even a small, even they, they prevent, they stop, they don't even, uh, even small assistance, subhanAllah, toward your relative. And there are so many verses in the Quran. One of the, the other verses, Allah says in Surah Al-Ra'ad, they say, وَالَّذِينَ يَنْقُلُونَ عَهَدَ اللَّهِ مِنْ بَعْدِ مِثَاقِهِ Those who uh, they don't respect عهد, the covenant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, وَيَقْطَعُونَ مَا أَمَرَ اللَّهُ بِهِ أَنْ يُوصَلَ And they break what Allah has um, commanded to do that, to connect, to join, subhanAllah, وَيُسِدُونَ فِي الْأَرَضِ and then they make they commit uh, corruption on the earth. And Allah, again, Allah says, lahum lahum Those, they have what? La'na of Allah upon them. Lahum and they have a very bad and evil uh, abode. So we can go on and on, brothers and sisters. What is the, What we need to extract from here is that severity that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the big warning toward those who breaks the ties of family. That is in the Quran, but again in the Sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam, there are so many uh, uh, hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam. One of the hadith uh, an Abi Huraira radiallahu anhu, anna nabiya sallallahu alayhi wasallam, uh, anna nabiya sallallahu alayhi wasallam qal, the messenger said, <coughs> inna a'mal bani adam <coughs> tu'aradu kulli khamis in layla fil jama'ah. Our deeds are exposed, presented to Allah every night of uh, Jumu'ah uh, on Thursday. فَلَا يُقْبَلُ عَمَلٌ قَاطِعٌ رَحِيمٌ The deed of the one who breaks the family ties are not acceptable. They are not accepted. Imagine every Thursday, our deed we do the whole week, they are presented to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But if you are involved in breaking family ties, your salah, your fasting, your sadaqa, everything they just be suspended. They are not accept accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah Akbar, Allah Akbar. In another hadith, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, la al Among them, the Prophet said, Mudmin Khamr, the one we involved involve in to intoxicate, intoxicant, okay, waqati'ur rahim, and the one who breaks the ties of family. So the one who breaks the tie of family, la yadkhulul jannah, he will never be admitted into paradise. And this is another hadith from Jabir as well, which uh, the Prophet said again the same thing, la yadkhulul jannah, qati'ah. The one who breaks the one who breaks the family ties, the kinship, لا يدخل الجنة. He will never, it doesn't uh, be accepted or admit, admitted into paradise. So what can we conclude with all these, uh, for these concepts, uh, if I can summarize, is that Islam is divided into three main areas. We, me and you as Muslim, we need to concentrate on our aqidah, making sure that we have the right aqidah, the right aqidah, the right doctrine, which is al-imaniyat, the belief, the, the, the set of belief that we have, believing in Allah, believing in the, in the, the prophet, in the angels, all those are called imaniyat, things that we believe. And then making sure that you have the right aqidah, because if you have the wrong aqidah, you'll be diverted, you go astray. So the belief, that's the first part, the first part area. The other area is al-ibadat, the set of ibadah, the acts of worship that we do, from salah, from zakah, from charity, from sadaqah, from hajj, all those we do, okay? Those are ibadat. But there is another third area, which is al-mu'amalat, the relationship. And this is quite a large topic, mu'amalat, but uh, 
face our relationship, whether it's a relationship with Allah, whether it's a relationship within our family, whether it's a relationship with neighbors, with a relationship with others, with relationship with non-Muslims, with relationship in our businesses, in our uh, all this is relationship. But here we are taking the subset of muamalat, which is relationship with our within our family. So we need to concentrate on these three aspects of Islam. Don't be successful in aqidah and don't and then, and then you fail in your ibadah. Don't be successful in aqidah and ibadah and you fail in your muamalat, in your relationship. Okay? So we have to apply our Islam holistically in all these areas. So our topic is about muamalat and not muamalat in general, is a subset of muamalat, which is relationship with our families. That's a swilatul rahim. And then the word that Allah used in Arabic is that he used the word rahim, which is the womb. It depicts that all of us we come from the womb. The extended family comes from the same womb, whether it's for great, 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 great parents, all of those the siblings, the third cousin, the fourth cousin, or whatever, we all relate to the one womb. So how Allah used this womb, he used this, the word womb in the Quran, and then he made it having taqwa of Allah and secondly, having taqwa of the womb. How we can respect, fulfill the right of Allah and the right of our family, the womb. Again in the Quran, how Allah put the right of the womb before even the rights of orphans, before the rights of uh, poor, before the rights of travelers. Yeah? And in, verse, in, in, in the various uh, uh, hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The last part is qati'atul rahim. If you break, that's a severe warning. If you break, the consequence is that you never be admitted to Jannah. The consequence is that you get la'na, the cursing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah protect us from all of, all of these. So finally, this is what uh, I summarize this particular important topic that uh, we should concentrate not only on our aqidah or our ibadah, but more emphasis on our relationship with others, and particularly within our extended family. And then making sure that we forgive people who are within your family, making sure that you assist them, even if you don't have something to assist them, but making sure that you connect with them by texting, by calling, at least you have, and then remove any grudge that you have within your family, even if they actually uh, uh, did wrong to you. Okay, you have to make sure that you assist them, you all you, for, you forgive them. So, this is what uh, I prepared to share with you today, and just a, a quick summary for this going through the very, very verses of the Quran and the hadith. And I think I can stop from here. <laughs> If there are any questions with, uh, within the, uh, the topic, uh, something that uh, I did not clarify, I'm here, I can clarify, inshallah. Wa alaykum as salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Jazakallah khair al jazaa wa brother. So now we open the uh, question and answer session. So whoever has a question could ask, is a writing or you could uh, unmute yourself, please. <clears throat> now, there's no any question to clarify within the topic is much better instead of that question outside the topic. In education, when in teaching, we said if the students don't have questions, that it means either they did understand understand the, 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 the topic or the topic was not interested or it was bored. <laughs> Now, <clears throat> if 
Yes. Uh, it said, uh, there's one question here, someone writes. It said, why do people fail in Salat al-Rahim? Uh, yes, a very, very good, very good question. Many ways, I can say, uh, one of the reasons is it's about education. It's about how we learn our deen. One of the reasons that many people fail in Surah Al-Rahim is the way we learn our deen. We learn our deen just by concentrating on ibadat. Hey, you have to pray, making sure you see someone making five prayer, mashallah is a good Muslim. Ah, he's fasting Ramadan, mashallah is a good Muslim. Emphasis on ibadat, ibadat. So we summarize our deen only by ibadat only. And we forget that there are other aspects of our deen. So aspects such as aqidah. If you have a wrong aqidah, how many people in Islam, five daily prayers, they respect, saum, sadaqa, hajj, whatever they do. But when you look at their aqidah, it's all about shirk and shirk. When a shirk enters or is, is with, together with the aqidah or with the ibadah, it's fasadat. It destroys it. Okay? So concentrate. One of the reasons is more concentration on what? On ibadah. And then we forget the aspect of aqidah. And also, more importantly, we forget the aspect of mu'amalat. And especially mu'amalat within our family. So you can you saw uh, in various verses of the Quran how Allah linked his name al-Rahman which is uh, with the Rahim with the womb, with family. The womb, Rahim, came or derived from Rahman. What does it mean? It means me and you, we have to be Rahim, be compassionate, be merciful to work within our families. Be merciful within our family, the father toward the children, the children with the father or husband and spouse and uh, wife. That is the first thing that we need to do because the word Rahim, the womb, the family, derived from Ar Rahman. So it is actually that we need to spread mercy within our family. Do we do that? So concentration on ibadah, but when you go back to the family, it's a chaos. That's an example I gave a place where a region, when I observe, even Salat al Fajr, more than 300 people in a mosque is full. 300 people full in Salat al Fajr, which is the most difficult Salat to many. But again, when you look at social interaction, it's a chaos, family breakdowns, family ties are broken down. If you look at the Mirat inheritance, it's broken down. Why? Concentration on Ibadah and neglect, okay, negligence on a what? On Muhammadat. So one of the reasons is the way we learn the deen. So we learn the deen badly by concentrating on only on ibadat and we forgot this other aspect of Islam. That's number one. That, that's what I can say, one of the reasons. So we need to go back to our Islam and then apply to Islam holistically by, you know, uh, looking at all these main areas of our deen, inshallah. Allahu A'la. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam. My Salam. question is. Uh, can you can you raise the voice, please? Uh, yes, I hope you can hear me clearly. My question is on. What are the what reasons uh, is allowed in Islam for one to severe kinship? What's reason? What what is the reason mm -hmm. uh, in Islam that one is allowed to cut off kinship? Oh, okay. What is the reason? Okay, what is the area or aspect that I am allowed to cut the, 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 the kinship? I can say there's no reason. Generally speaking, 
there is no reason in any way, even if within your family there are non-Muslims, you still have to maintain ties with them. Even if they are non-Muslims, and not only your, within your family, even the neighbors, you see the verse in the Quran, Al-Jaru al qurba even your neighbor, which is a clo uh, the, the closest neighbor, you have the right upon them. Even the, the, those neighbors who are far, you have a right upon them. These are the neighbors, even non-Muslim and uh, Muslims. And then we say in Islam, neighbors there are different types of neighbors. There are a neighbor <coughs> with a, your, your relative, your family member, or a neighbor is a Muslim, or a neighbor is a non-Muslim. So you have the right to, upon those three. The neighbor who is, a, you, is a, your relative, but is a, your neighbor. So he has two rights, right of neighbor, right of relative, and right of Islam, three actually. A neighbor who is a non uh, is a Muslim, but not your relative, you still have the right of Muslim and neighbor. A neighbor who is a non-Muslim, you still have the right of uh, neighbor. Okay, so there is no way you can say, "Hey, this is the only reason that you can say now I break with my with my family." No. So we are commanded to do good toward our parent, even if they are not Muslim. Eh? You have even to stay with them, even if they do this and this, you have to stay in goodness with them, okay? As long as you're still, you're still alive. Unless there are circumstances that they want to harm you. If you know that this member of family, and you are uh, you're certain to that they want to harm you, in that, in that circumstance, you can avoid it. You can avoid them. You can stay away from them. But again, you have to connect with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That Allah, oh Allah, this is my situation. You know, sometimes we fail in addressing our dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Circum our circumstances to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Say, Ya Rabbi, you commanded us to do what? To, go, to, 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 to maintain the ties. But look at this person. Say his name, address this to Allah by his name. So and so, I try to do good. I try to do this, but he's trying, he's trying to harm. One of the, 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 the hadith, I can't remember the, 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 the full hadith, but someone can, Ya Rasulullah, I do good to my family, but they break. I do good, they break. What should I do? The response was, you have to continue to do good. Okay? Unless they stop, A, I don't want you to do good to me. But still, if you have to text, you can text. If you have to do any other way, you have to do it. The again exposes this to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because Allah will be shaheed that Allah, I've tried this and this, but they don't do this. I have tried this to maintain, but they don't, they, they reply to me this. So you have to address this to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So making sure that you stay away from all these, that warning that Allah gives in the Quran, and the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam in the in the, in the various hadith we went through. Allah 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 knows best. Uh, someone uh, wrote here, say, mostly we do our best to maintain Surah Al-Rahim, the family ties, but our closest family, brothers and sisters, let us down despite being nicer to them on a daily basis to the extent that they are more uh, our grave digger, how shall I keep up with them as it seems remaining with them is dangerous to me? I think that's what I, I, I said earlier. If it's something that is going to be harmful to you, then you need to avoid. Allah says in the Quran, وَلَا تُلْقُوا أَيْدِيَكُمْ إِلَى التَّهَلُكَ You do not have to expose yourself to a danger, okay? So if you find that hey, there's a danger in dealing with this, with this particular member of family, then you need to stay away, okay? And then he continues by saying here, by writing in terms of severing or cutting off our ties or kinship. This topic is deep. Sometimes it is hard to maintain the kinship. Yes, my brother or sister, if it is harder to maintain the kinship, Yes, if it is hard to maintain the kinship, this is what Allah commanded, uh, commanded us to do, okay? It is also harder to maintain five, five daily prayer. 
you have to sacrifice. It is also hard to fast the whole Ramadan in the, uh, in the summer, 18 hours fasting. It's not easy. It's hard. It is hard also to take the zakah out of your wealth, you know, 2.5%, something that you struggle for yourself. And about Allah says, hey, take it, give to someone else. It is hard. So you have to sacrifice yourself and see hey, what's the reward out of it. One of the rewards we say is what? Uh, Allah will increase your wealth. One of the rewards is that Allah will give you Jannah. Subhanallah. Uh, yeah, so it's that struggles. Always we, we, we struggle with our ego. The problem is the ego. The ego tells you, hey, so and so, your brother, your relative, did wrong to you. Okay? So many of us in Europe, we have this problem that you have your money and then you give to relative in Africa to buy for you the land or a, a house and then they, they, they take it, everything. What you have to do? Qati'a rahim, breaking the, 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 the ties? Or no, no. You remember the, uh, the, the verse in Surah Al-Nur, uh, the Qisa to uh, if what uh, when happened to Abu Bakr Siddiq, uh, when his daughter, uh, our mother Aisha radiallahu anha, when she was uh, <clears throat> told that, yeah, she, that she, she went, uh, she did something wrong, moral, and then Abu Bakr Siddiq find out, okay, the one who spread the news is one, is one of the close mem members of, of the family. And yet Abu Bakr Siddiq was actually assisting financially Musab, that, 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 that Sahaba. What happened to Abu Bakr, he said, hey, now I cut. You did this to my daughter, I cut my, 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 my assistant to you. What was the response of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Correcting Abu Bakr Siddiq, hey, you shouldn't do that. Eh? You shouldn't do that. Allah provided wealth to you, A, to assist others, your family, whatever. You shouldn't do that. You have to do what? You have to forgive. You overlook. Don't you want that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives you? So if you want forgiveness of Allah, forgive you as well. Forgive the one who wrongs you. So that is the difficult. So you have to sacrifice, slaughter your ego in order to get the Jannah. Slaughter your ego to apply what Allah says in the Quran and the Prophet وسلم, in the Sunnah. Allah Allah. Yeah. Now, no any other question? No. <clears throat> so this, there's no questions. I don't know whether we can stop now. Jazakallah khair al jaza. We'll end the session. Jazakallah khair al jaza. And also we ask Allah to grant all of us uh, uh, is Jannah for those who are attending and those who ask questions. And I hope this was beneficial to all of us, especially who are living in this part of the world, because most of the time they only concentrate on their dad and mom. And they forgot about other family members. It's so important, is what our brother uh, emphasized, that it's so important to make sure you open your heart and your hands and your door to others, not only to God and mom. Jazakallah khair al for being with us today, this night. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to <coughs> grant us the best in this world and here. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.